So this, as I'm sure you know, is the Mahindra TUV300. So what are we doing reviewing it one more time? Well, it's simple. There's more of it this time. Say hello to the TUV300 Plus, and that means there's more than just the 405 millimeters of extra car behind the rear wheels. It's also got bigger third row seats. It's got slightly bigger wheels, and it's even got a bigger engine. So there's definitely more to it than meets the eye. We've got to check it out. Now, if you like this car or you don't, let us know in the comments. Give this video a like if you enjoy it and be sure to subscribe to the Autocar channel if you haven't done so already and click on the bell icon to get a notification each time we upload a new video. Now, back to the review. It's a TUV 300, all right, and there's no mistaking it for anything else. Some may find it a bit too boxy and angular, but on the contrary, many others love it for its rugged simplicity and butch appeal. The wheelbase is the same, but the added length helps give it a better stance than the smaller TUV. It looks less abrupt. What also helps are the 16-inch wheels, a size up on the old 15-inches. And if you look closely, you'll see the fog lamp housings are a bit different. And no, you can't get this one with a contrast-coloured roof. Still, though the added length is an improvement, it still doesn't have the same squat stance as, say, a Scorpio. So that's what's new on the outside of the Plus. But the biggest change can be found on the inside. Now, of course, these are the seats I have to tell you about in detail because they are what make the TUV300 Plus what it is. Now, Mahindra claims that this is a nine-seater, but that would involve fitting four people in this space right here. They also claim that the regular TUV is a seven-seater and we know that really isn't true. You can't very well fit two people in the back of that car. You can fit two people in the back here, but as you can tell, headroom is not very great. Your knees will probably bump into the passenger in front of you and it's a really, really big climb from the outside into this back seat. But most of all, there are no seat belts back here. So, rather than seating people, perhaps it's better to use this vast area for a lot of luggage. Since the wheelbase is the same as the smaller cars, the middle row is unchanged too. And while that means a large, wide seat with generous thigh support and shoulder room for three, leg room leaves a bit to be desired. We do, however, like the new quilted, matte finish, four leather upholstery, which feels classier than the usual rec scene you might otherwise get. The front of the cabin is unchanged too, and though the design is refreshingly clean and uncluttered by Mahindra standards, and the build quality is pretty tough, it's not all perfect. For instance, the plastics are generally hard and scratchy, and though there are some storage areas, most of them feel too small or poorly positioned to be properly useful. But the biggest annoyance is trying to slot the six-speed manual into reverse, as it's too close to first gear and there's no safety lock. By modern-day segment standards, the TUV300 Plus, even in this top P8 spec, isn't the most generously equipped. And you have to remember it costs 10.98 lakh rupees ex showroom. Sure, you get a touchscreen with navigation, steering-mounted controls, rear parking sensors and electrically adjustable outside mirrors, but there's no auto climate control, no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and most of all, no rear-view camera. So when it comes to creature comforts, rivals do it better. But let's see if the real benefits of the TUV300 Plus can be found out on the road. Now it may be a TUV300 in name and in appearance, but under the skin, it's actually quite closely related to a Scorpio. For one, it's about the same size as a Scorpio, and all TUVs use the modified version of the Scorpio chassis. But this one also has the Scorpio's engine and gearbox. That's right, it uses the 2.2-litre four-cylinder diesel engine and six-speed manual from the Scorpio. But it's not the maximum state of tune. This one makes 120 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. Interestingly, those figures are just 20 horsepower and 20 newton meters more than the 1.5 liter three cylinder in the regular TUV. However, this car feels significantly more effortless than that one did. And I'm sure if you loaded it up with passengers and luggage, there's where you'd find the real difference. This one would have a much easier time. 
So as in the Scorpio, this motor has a lot of pep off the line and then it really wakes up properly past 2000 RPM. If you find yourself in a gear that's too high, you might get caught in a zone of off-boost lag, but it's a quick shift a gear down to get you back into the meat of the power band. Like with the Scorpio and the regular TUV, you have this long, tall gear lever. The clutch is light enough and the gear shifts also are reasonably light too, but it does feel a little bit rubbery and loose and there are a lot of vibrations that come through the lever. Now this is meant to be a family car and if it's fully loaded up for a road trip, you'll be really thankful for this 2.2 litre engine's strong, powerful mid-range. It really pulls very effortlessly and it will be great out on the highway. Now typical of this sort of ladder frame SUV, the suspension is set up quite soft. So it's really rather cushy and comfy and it takes smaller bumps in its stride quite well. It's only that larger, sharper bumps will really thunk through and shake you around in the cabin and it can be a little bit bouncy at times. But still, it's got pretty solid highway stability. So once again, a boon if you want to go on one of those long distance road trips. Now, as you might imagine from a tall ladder frame SUV like this, there is a lot of body roll going around corners. And the steering too, it's quite heavy at low speeds which makes parking a bit cumbersome. As you go faster, it does give you good confidence but it's not bristling with feel and overall this is not a car you want to drive for fun handling. The TUV 300 Plus then is an interesting if unusual proposition. It slots in between the TUV 300 and the Scorpio on price and under the skin it's a mix of those two cars. It looks like its smaller sibling and is equipped similarly too, but it uses the bigger engine and six-speed gearbox of the Scorpio. However, as a package, it sort of feels neither here nor there. It's lost the compactness of the regular TUV and it doesn't feel quite as upmarket as the Scorpio. Plus, with both its siblings on either side of it and not much price difference in between, you might wonder if there was really room for another SUV between them. It gets some basics right, like space, comfort and a feeling of toughness. But look beyond those and you'll find more attractive options both outside of Mahindra's stable and within it too.